Hi and welcome to IMTV, the international Marxist television channel brought to you by Socialist Appeal, socialist.net. This week on our third episode we're going to be discussing the situation in Palestine and Gaza and to join us for this discussion we've got Francesco Merli, a regular writer at marxist.com, the website of the international Marxist tendency. And as I say, we're going to be discussing what's going on in Israel-Palestine where on the border between Gaza and Israel recently, we've seen mass protests taking place, commemorating what's known as the Nakba, the uh, mass exodus of Palestinians in 1948, 70 years ago, when the State of Israel was founded. Dozens have been killed in uh, what is the deadliest massacre of uh, Gazans since 2014. Um, so, to begin with, Francesco, can you just outline a bit about these protests? Why have they taken place? Well, the protests were uh, uh, in commemoration of the Nakba uh, and for the right of all refugees to return to their homes. 70% uh, of the population of Gaza is made up of refugees on different moments. Uh, people who were displaced in 1948 or 1967 or in other moments uh, during the many wars and many um, uh, aggressions uh, uh, to the Palestinian people. Uh, so this, this is a very important uh, uh, question for all Palestinians, but especially for the people living in Gaza. The second main uh, um, reason for this protest was uh, the uh, enormous uh, pressure on the Gazan people <coughs> uh, put by the blockade, uh, which has been uh, in place uh, over the last 12 years. Uh, it's an economic blockade, uh, 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 people cannot uh, move freely out of the Gaza Strip uh, and Israel controls effectively all the main uh, levers of the economy in Gaza uh, from te telecommunications uh, to even the water supply, energy supply, uh, the import and export of uh, uh, any goods, uh, spare parts, uh, medicines, drugs, uh, all these things are controlled by Israel uh, which is uh, uh, asphyxiating uh, uh, about 2 million people living in the Gaza Strip, uh, which can be effectively described as an open-air prison now. Uh, and for the last 12 years, uh, this um, uh, increasing pressure by the Israeli authorities uh, has brought about uh, a collapse of uh, the infrastructure in Gaza. Uh, so, for example, now <coughs> most of the water is uh, polluted because uh, there is no uh, uh, there are no investments or uh, possibility to uh, improve uh, the sewage uh, networks uh, in uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, uh, also, uh, water supply is infiltrated by salt, by uh, 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 marine, marine water. Uh, so, uh, even the most basic uh, needs of the Gazan population uh, are uh, completely um, um, uh, jeopardized by this uh, blockade which has been put in place for 12 years now. So you've talked about the blockade of the last 12 years but also the protests commemorating what happened 70 years ago with the foundation of Israel um, and this, this forced uh, kind of eviction of, of hundreds of thousands of uh, Palestinians. Um, can you explain a bit about the background to the foundation of Israel in 1948. The uh, State of Israel, Israel was declared in, uh, on the 15th of May uh, 1948 uh, and uh, as a result of this process uh, and the uh, terror unleashed against the Palestinian population uh, about 700,000 to seven, uh, some uh, figures talk about 1 million people even uh, but about 700,000 Palestinians were pushed out of their uh, villages, their towns their land <coughs> and uh, pushed out of, uh, uh, of uh, Palestine effectively uh, and uh, uh, all the uh, Palestinian properties were seized by, by the Israeli army uh, and uh, many cities were destroyed in order to uh, avoid the possibility of uh, the Palestinian population to go back to their um, uh, homes uh, and that created, the, uh, the establishment of Israel created uh, the, the huge uh, Palestinian question that we are now uh, dealing with, that we are now uh, facing uh, with for the, for the past 70 years. Uh, now the population of um, uh, Palestinians uh, originated by 
the refugees uh, f uh, fleeing uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, the advance of uh, the Israeli army, what what would become the Israeli army, uh, is uh, numbered in about seven million people, which is displaced around in the neighboring countries or uh, in a. Uh, spread around the world. So how do we go from the situation of the Oslo Accords and the Palestinian Authority to the situation today where you've got the West Bank and Gaza divided with Fatah dominating over the West Bank and Gaza dominated by Hamas politically. How has that situation arisen? So uh, the establishment of the Palestinian Authority has changed um, uh, the whole situation. Uh, the, the Oslo and Madrid Accords uh, were, uh, 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 were the culminating result of these dim diplomatic efforts uh, by the Palestinian leadership. Uh, but basically uh, where uh, the outcome, uh, like a secondary outcome of uh, a massive revolt of the Palestinian people, uh, the Second Intifada, uh, started in uh, 1987, uh, which was the revolt of the Palestinian people in the occupied territories, uh, in the West Bank, in Gaza, uh, and Jerusalem as well. Uh, a, a mass insurrection against uh, the Israeli occupation, which uh, after 20 years uh, uh, of uh, this occupation uh, signaled that uh, uh, there was uh, uh, um, um, uh, an important change in the consciousness of the Palestinian people. This revolt uh, went on for five years uh, with more than 1,000 people, uh, Palestinians, killed uh, and uh, had a, a huge impact also on the Israeli youth and working class, uh, especially at the beginning. Um, so the, 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 outcome, the negotiated outcome of, uh, 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 was based on the recognition by Israel that they couldn't hold on uh, uh, the occupied territories in the same way as before and they needed, uh, under the supervision and pressure uh, by US imperialism, which kind of catered uh, the accords, uh, uh, had to rely on the Palestinian leadership in order to um, uh, police and uh, discipline and uh, control uh, the Palestinian population in the occupied territories. <coughs> that uh, The outcome was the creation of the Palestinian Authority uh, with uh, the establishment and the handing over of the um, uh, police uh, operations uh, to Palestinian police, for example, and the establishment of uh, some sort of state, uh, semi-state uh, apparatus, uh, Palestinian apparatus around the Palestinian Authority in 1994. Uh, since then, what happened is that uh, the Palestinian Authority has failed uh, completely uh, in developing uh, into an independent state uh, because there was no possibility whatsoever for the Palestinian leadership uh, to uh, uh, develop the economy of Gaza and the West Bank, uh, even divided geographically as they are, um, uh, under a constant uh, economic and military pressure by uh, Israel who uh, uh, st stayed completely in control um, of, uh, of the economy, of the infrastructure, of uh, every lever uh, of power. Uh, and the Palestinian leadership got uh, increasingly discredited, uh, the Palestinian leadership of the PLO especially, uh, and Fatah in particular, uh, including even Arafat, who uh, was the first president of the Palestinian Authority and he was elected with 87% of uh, the votes. Uh, huge, massive support for Arafat. Uh, but in, uh, in, uh, in the space of 20 years, uh, the whole situation has uh, uh, revealed uh, what uh, we Marxists uh, um, um, warned uh, the Palestinian uh, people uh, at the time and that uh, there was no solution, no possible solution for the Palestinian uh, national uh, uh, liberation struggle uh, by just uh, in, uh, establishing a kind of uh, puppet state in the, in the hands of Israel. Uh, that was uh, expressed in the elections in 2006 uh, where Hamas took over the majority of, uh, uh, in Gaza. Uh, and that is the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of the present situation where uh, Hamas uh, has uh, a big control over uh, all the activities within Gaza 
uh, is in a, in a uh, frontal confrontation with the Israeli uh, state, <coughs> but at the same time, obviously, uh, repressing uh, its own population uh, inside Gaza, and especially uh, rep uh, the repression is aimed at uh, those forces that are not under the control of Hamas, like, for example, the trade union movement uh, or socialist organizations like uh, um, uh, which have uh, an important, uh, historically have an important base in uh, in uh, Gaza, and uh, uh, the, the confrontation between uh, Hamas and uh, uh, the Israeli state has helped Hamas to strengthen his position, uh, their position in uh, uh, in Gaza, and become the predominant force now. So, as you said, the the Palestinian struggle obviously. Um uh, it's something that's you know watched by the whole world uh, and attracts a lot of attention uh, and obviously it's the the actions of the Israeli state in particular that attract uh, a lot of criticism um, but what we often see particularly here in Britain is that that criticism of the Israeli state of that kind of Zionist uh, project um, it's often accused of being anti-semitism I mean we hear, see here in Britain at the moment with uh, with the accusations against the Corbyn movement, um, lots of uh, anti-Semitism accusations going on. When in fact, a lot of people are criticising, you know, the oppression of the Palestinians, not uh, anything to do with Jewish people themselves. Um, but can you elaborate a bit on, you know, what is the difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, and 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 what are the real origins of Zionism? Well, Zionism uh, 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 develops as a, as a reaction against um, uh, the oppression of the Jewish people, uh, especially, especially in Europe, uh, starting from the late uh, 19th century, uh, and develops as a theory, uh, the idea basically that uh, there could be a homeland for the Jewish people, uh, back in uh, the original uh, uh, point of origin of, uh, of uh, Judaism, uh, which is Palestine. Zionism is uh, uh, an imperialist uh, project because uh, uh, this uh, Palestine was not uh, an empty land as it was portrayed by the uh, first Zionist uh, writers. Each uh, step in the setting up of uh, 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 first the Jewish authority and then the Israeli state has been uh, a, a step of uh, which meant the displacement of uh, uh, the indigenous population of uh, Palestine, uh, step after step, war after war, um, and, and this process is continuing with, uh, for example, uh, even after the establishment of the Palestinian Authority, there are now about 700,000 and more uh, Jewish settlers, Jewish uh, colonizers, uh, in illegal uh, colonies set up inside the territory of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So from this point of view, uh, uh, we uh, uh, criticize Zionism, we oppose Zionism. Uh, doesn't mean that we oppose uh, the Jews as, uh, as, uh, as such uh, and uh, we don't see, for example, the, as Marxists, uh, uh, the fact that Israel is a capitalist country like, uh, like any other country in the world which is based on the exploitation of uh, their own working class. The working class in uh, Israel is, uh, uh, is uh, made of uh, uh, Arab, uh, population is made of uh, Jewish workers as well uh, and it's a powerful force in uh, Israel uh, but because of this uh, 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 continuous uh, conflict uh, the Israeli ruling class is able to mobilize uh, the Jewish uh, working class uh, or at least layers of the Jewish uh, working class in active support uh, for Israel under the threat uh, they, they portray Israel as a besieged fortress which is threatened by all the enemy countries around them uh, by the Palestinians uh, insurgents and so on and so forth so in this way effectively they manage to uh, uh, rally around the, the Jewish state at any uh, junction at any 
at every important crisis uh, where the Jewish state and Israel is uh, under threat or is uh, they portray it as uh, being under threat. Um, so uh, th our opposition is not uh, to the Jewish people but it's uh, an opposition to the Zionist uh, imperialist project which has been uh, uh, supported and uh, aided and financed uh, by uh, all the imperialist powers in the world and especially the United States uh, with uh, huge resources dedicated uh, to supporting Israel. From the, uh, the US imperialist uh, point of view, Israel is uh, an important uh, stronghold in the Middle East. Uh, it's a source of problems as well, uh, because it creates tensions and conflicts all the time. Uh, but it's, it is also uh, what they can regard as uh, the most powerful uh, lever uh, they have in the Middle East, in terms of both military and economically, uh, in economic terms, uh, Israel is uh, an important country. So, obviously, the oppression of the Palestinians um, is something that a lot of people feel very passionately about. They want to do something internationally uh, to try and resolve the situation, to, to, to help the Palestinian struggle. And I'd say the most kind of famous or most popular tactic internationally has been the, the BDS movement, the idea of boycott, divestment and uh, sanctions on Israeli uh, products, on Israeli academics, things like that. Um, can you explain a bit more about the BDS movement and, and the impact that it's had? Well, the impact is, uh, I would say, uh, very small. Uh, almost negligible. Uh, the only impact this campaign can have is uh, to uh, raise awareness in terms of uh, as, being, as being used as a tool to highlight the plight of the Palestinian people uh, in many ways. Obviously uh, the declaration um, of important uh, intellectuals or important uh, figures internationally criticizing the actions of Israel are uh, important in, in the general movement uh, against uh, the occupation of uh, 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 Palestine and the violence uh, and the oppression of the Palestinian people and so on. Uh, but uh, as, uh, as a movement, the BDS uh, uh, cannot achieve the aim of uh, 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 carrying out uh, or even a lot, uh, uh, creating the, the, the critical mass uh, of support uh, for Israel to step down uh, from the present uh, course of action. In fact, Israel is totally, uh, the Israeli ruling class is totally, is using uh, the BDS movement uh, as an excuse uh, to uh, strengthen the idea that Israel is under attack uh, and, in, and uh, that can uh, have for a limited time, I would say, but uh, uh, still has uh, an impact on the Israeli population. Um, so to present Israel as uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the country that is under attack, not the aggressors. And, uh, uh, and therefore the BDS, uh, the effects of the BDS movement are limited. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, some, for some forms of boycott uh, could be justified, uh, but they have to be thought in a way that uh, uh, it's, uh, the boycott is carried out by the organized working class. Uh, there was one uh, news item which was uh, the announcement by a trade union in uh, Tunisia that they would uh, um, carry out a boycott of all the uh, um, trade with uh, Israel uh, in terms of blocking uh, the shipments and blocking uh, the un unloading of stuff from uh, Israeli ships and so on. Uh, if that develops as an international movement of the working class, uh, then it can be aimed also at connecting with the legitimate uh, struggles of the workers, both on the Palestinian side and the, and the um, uh, Israel uh, working class, in the Israeli working class, because there are this, there are struggles developing, obviously, also within Israel. Uh, Israel is one of the most unequal countries. We had. Uh, examples of uh, big waves of protest in the past and that could uh, uh, come uh, again in the future.
think one of the most notable examples uh, that you just alluded to there was in 2011 when you obviously had the Arab revolutions, the Arab Spring uh, spreading from Tunisia and uh, into Egypt and uh, uh, there were protests at that time, I understand, in Tel Aviv as well. Um, you know, what, what was the impact of the Arab Spring on the situation in Israel and Palestine? In 2011, uh, we saw the impact of the Arab revolutions. And I think that's important because uh, one of the uh, main uh, uh, levers uh, in terms of uh, justification for, for the foreign policy and the internal policy uh, and the repressive uh, outlook of, uh, of uh, the Israeli ruling class has always been uh, the threat from the outside. And uh, regimes like that of Mubarak or uh, Saddam Hussein or other uh, reactionary regimes uh, were uh, presented as uh, scarecrows, as, uh, as the, the enemy. Um, uh, uh, that uh, the mass of the uh, Jewish workers in Israel would not consider as uh, potential uh, allies in a, in a peaceful settlement, uh, but as enemies. Uh, and therefore the uh, development of the Arab Revolution has uh, had um, uh, the effect of uh, shaking uh, uh, this idea uh, that the Arab people are reactionary, they, they are enemies, uh, because uh, most of the uh, of the uh, 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 Israeli uh, workers and youth uh, could identify with uh, the struggle of uh, of the youth in uh, Cairo uh, and and their attempt to topple a reactionary and repressive regime. So there was a connection there. And they could recognize also that uh, Israel is, uh, is a country where uh, the conditions of uh, life are getting more and more difficult <coughs> for the working class. Um, uh, the level of wages has been uh, uh, under attack for a number of uh, years, if not uh, decades now. <coughs> the polarization of wealth is uh, increasing. Um, uh, and all uh, the uh, resources put into uh, the army and repress repression uh, are not uh, used obviously to, to create better conditions and housing for, for the Jewish population. So that was the base for the 2011 movement, which was a mass movement in Israel against the government. Um, which was a kind of a, a consequence of uh, the wave of protests that was uh, developing in throughout the Middle East. Uh, and it was also a consequence of the idea that uh, uh, there is a, a repressive reactionary government um, in Israel as well. And uh, that this government is uh, uh, carrying out austerity and anti-working class policies which are hitting both the Palestinians and uh, the Jewish workers. So there is a basis there for uh, future development of a, of a mass movement against the Israeli ruling class. And that is also the reason why the uh, Netanyahu's of this world um, uh, are so keen in uh, provoking uh, even more uh, uh, the possibility of future conflicts like for example the idea that Iran now is the big threat and uh, that Iran uh, has uh, is developing nuclear weapons to wipe out Israel and, and things of, the, of this sort, which is obviously part of the, uh, this desperate attempt by Netanyahu and the, and the right wing uh, within Israel uh, to mobilize uh, support around them uh, again against a uh, foreign threat, again uh, against a massive uh, threat to the very existence of Israel. Uh, and and uh, obviously this trick is working uh, to a certain extent but uh, less and less uh, because people are now realizing even within Israel uh, that uh, society is not heading uh, towards any any better situation. It's uh, becoming worse and worse. The conditions are getting worse. The conflict is getting worse, uh, and there is no not much hope in the future. But that will turn into a rebellion against the government at some point. So, what do you think the solution is for the people of Palestine? Because a lot of the debate. Uh, on the left especially, um, it always centers around the question of you know one state or two state 
Are either of these really a solution? What, what is the way forward for the people in Palestine? Well, the two-state solution, so-called solution, uh, is not two states, first of all, because uh, two states are impossible. Israel, the Israeli ruling class cannot allow a Palestinian state uh, in uh, uh, the territory of Palestine. Uh, so what we had was, in reality, uh, a puppet state uh, which uh, had the main purpose of uh, keeping under control the mass of the Palestinian population in, uh, in the uh, former occupied territories. In reality, the occupation has continued. So there is no two-state solution. Uh, the, the possibility of a two-state solution is also made impossible by Israel by all this movement of people that uh, they are creating constantly. Uh, this infiltrating and uh, uh, creating new settlements has basically uh, wiped out the control over their own territory by the possibility of controlling their own territory by the Palestinian Authority altogether. Uh, Gaza is different, they withdrew from Gaza, but Gaza is not a viable uh, state, cannot be a viable state, it's a strip of uh, 40 kilometers times 5 or something like that, with 2 million people in it, with no possibility whatsoever of developing their own uh, independent economy, and uh, so there is no basis there for uh, a two-state solution. Uh, one state solution would be the re-annexation by Israel of the whole territory of, uh, of Palestine. Uh, there is now, uh, out of, I think, uh, uh, the, the dissatisfaction and uh, disillusionment uh, that uh, uh, a lot, an increasing share of the Palestinian uh, people have developed towards the Palestinian leadership of uh, Fatah in, in particular, uh, but also uh, towards uh, Hamas and any uh, forces that are kind of uh, connected to the, to the management of this situation. Uh, there is a strong feeling developing now that uh, it would be probably better for the Palestinian people to, to be in, in one state uh, and uh, to transform the Palestinian national struggle into uh, a struggle for equality. Uh, but the problem is that uh, one state or two state solution, whether uh, that happens under uh, the conditions of capitalism today, both uh, from the Israeli point uh, side uh, or the Palestinian side, uh, is creating a, a nightmarish situation because it's just a question of uh, who, even if uh, uh, an abstract bourgeois democratic state could be created uh, in uh, Palestine, uh, uh, which would allow to some sort of uh, democratic elections and so on, and uh, equal citizenship rights for all those who are, who are citizens of, uh, of Palestine. Even in, in that case, there would be a, a conflict, uh, a continuous conflict for the control over, uh, over this state. Uh, which is, uh, has uh, been transformed over the decades into an ethnic uh, uh, conflict for um, uh, uh, determining uh, majorities, ethnic majorities and so on. And that's one of the reasons why the Israeli ruling class cannot allow uh, f a free status of citizenship to the Palestinian uh, people, even if they had to regain control over the, the occupied territories as they are effectively uh, even now. So one state or two states uh, under capitalism uh, will provoke uh, uh, convulsions, crises uh, and uh, ethnic uh, and religious uh, conflicts and uh, uh, ultimately a civil war situation. Uh, so they are no, both uh, not solutions for the Palestinian uh, liberation, national liberation struggle uh, point of view, nor it is a solution for the Jewish uh, working class and youth in Israel. Uh, so the problem is not so much one state or two state, but it's uh, what kind of society uh, and how 
the resources which are important resources industrially, culturally, uh, infrastructure wise, uh, from all points of view, uh, uh, created uh, uh, and accumulated by Israel, uh, can be uh, made uh, um, uh, available and, and uh, at the disposal of the majority of uh, the population of uh, Palestine, both uh, Jewish and, uh, um, and uh, Palestinian. So that's the main question, is uh, a class struggle. Uh, obviously, this, uh, the development of the class struggle and uh, the need to overthrow the reactionary uh, regime, uh, both in the, uh, on the Palestinian side, uh, both in Gaza and uh, in uh, the West Bank, and in Israel, because obviously that's the main reactionary factor in the situation, is the Israeli state uh, and, and the control of the Israeli ruling class over society uh, within Israel. <coughs> the struggle against this can only be carried out successfully, not so much by uh, um, an international movement of boycott, as we were talking before, uh, but by uh, the development of uh, a joint movement of the Arab and Jewish uh, working class uh, in, uh, against capitalism in uh, Israel and in Palestine. And then the solution uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, how to overcome uh, the inequalities, uh, the huge uh, inequalities existing between uh, uh, the Israeli part of uh, Palestine and the Palestinian part of Palestine, uh, how to resolve all the questions uh, that have been created, these festering wounds uh, which have uh, been created by imperialist uh, in, in meddling in the, in the Middle East, like for example the question of the uh, right for the Palestinians to return to their home uh, hometowns, homelands, uh, which obviously cannot be carried out in the present situation. Um, uh, can uh, only in in uh, in a process of uh, overthrowing uh, the capitalist uh, oppressive system in Israel and in Palestine, uh, these questions can be dealt with uh, in a, in a way that uh, uh, they do not open up a conflict between uh, the poor in uh, and those who are the victims of this situation, uh, which are the Palestinian uh, people and workers. Uh, and uh, the Jewish working class as well. Thank you very much Francesco for joining us today and thank you to our viewers and listeners at home. Join us next time for IMTV episode 4 when we're going to be discussing the tragedy of the Grenfell fire which happened one year ago. In the meantime check out www.socialist.net for more articles and also follow us on YouTube for our videos and now you can also subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher and other podcast providers. So join us next time and see you there. Thank you.